Now at 11, a remarkable survival story. A family escapes harm when a plane crashes right through their roof. And it landed right into their living room. She was a star athlete training with Nike's Oregon Project. But tonight, she says that training ruined her body. I want the culture that allowed this to happen to change. The more we do now, the better it will be for us later. An Oregon State researcher pens a how-to guide for combating climate change. And an Oregon couple rescues an injured stray dog. Taco came from nothing, and he deserves a chance. Now they need your help finding him a home. I named the whistleblower today, and I guess it's big news. Our top story tonight, a local conservative radio host names the suspected whistleblower who sparked the impeachment inquiry against President Trump. Lars Larson dropped the name during an appearance on Fox News. To our knowledge, the name has never been mentioned on a major news network. While you're listening to this story, we want to know what you think. Vote in tonight's poll on your KGW app or by going straight to KGW.com slash vote. Let's get right to Mike Benner. He has a reaction from Lars Larson and a political analyst. Well, Laurel, political analyst Len Bergstein fears that Lars Larson's comments on Fox News will discourage future whistleblowers from coming forward with information. Larson, on the other hand, isn't concerned with that one bit. He believes the American people have a right to know who's exposed the president. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. It's a Conservative to talk show life. host Lars Larson is under fire. I'm always glad to get your calls. Not for what he said on his nationally syndicated radio show. With the so-called whistleblower. But for what he said during an appearance on Fox News's Outnumbered Overtime. Lars, that was salty. Yes. With Harris Faulkner. I think it's important in a case where we're literally considering the removal of an American president. Although he has no first-hand knowledge, Larson publicly identified who he believes is the whistleblower connected to President Trump's dealings with Ukraine. People will say this is reckless and dangerous. How? How is it reckless and dangerous to name the person who's accusing the president of the United States of high crimes and misdemeanors? Well, my first reaction is to shrug it off. This is Lars Larson. After all, we know him as a, the clown prince of distraction. Political analyst Len Bergstein calls Larson's decision to out the suspected whistleblower a fundamental disservice to our democracy. And the reason the whistleblower statutes were set up was so that someone could come forward with the truth and know that they would be protected. If, in fact, what a Lars Larson can do in this case is say, oh, no, if you come forward, you're fair game and we're going to make your life miserable. That will have a chilling effect on anybody, I think, coming forward. I, I named the whistleblower today. Lars Larson it's sees it news. differently what? and believes the person who may take down the president needs to be named. And I believe that all of official Washington knows, all of the press corps in Washington knows, and the only people who are being kept in the dark are the American people. And if you're talking about removing the president that was chosen by the American people, you have an obligation to tell them who's accusing. All right, as you might imagine, people are weighing in on social media, and those critical of Lars Larson's comments think he should be punished. But as he pointed out, Fox can't punish him because he's not an employee. Just a guest. Laurel. Thank you, Mike, and don't forget to vote in our poll. Let us know if you agree with Lars. Click the Vote tab on your KGW app or go directly to kgw.com slash vote. We'll reveal the results later in the show. Now, as far as the impeachment inquiry goes at this point, House Democrats, they are expected to call for the whistleblower's testimony, but his attorney says that he will only answer in writing. There was potentially some damaging testimony, though, today from the State Department official in charge of Ukraine policy. George Kent is his name. He told Congress the White House's actions with Ukraine were, quote, injurious to the rule of law. He said he was told by another diplomat that President Trump wanted to hear three words from Ukraine president, investigations, Biden and Clinton. Public hearings are scheduled to start next week. Now to get you caught up on tonight's other headlines, a handful of gang members allegedly responsible for murders and other crimes across Portland were indicted today. Prosecutors said members of the Hoover gang stood out because of their brutal acts of violence. 46 year old Lorenzo Jones, you see here, was indicted for his role in the shooting deaths of two men and the attempted murder of six others. Fellow Hoover gang members Ronald Rose and Javier Hernandez were previously charged. The first funerals for the Americans killed by a drug cartel in Mexico were held today. Three mothers and six children died. Five other children are currently still in the hospital. Right now there are no suspects and no arrests in the case. 
This is an unbelievable video. A small plane crashed into that house in San Bernardino County, California today. Amazingly, the family inside got out safely. However, the pilot did die in the crash. This was a single engine plane that went straight through the roof. Three people in the house, including a baby. They were all in the home at the time and they got out unharmed. The NTSB is now investigating what caused that crash. That's why I'm doing this. It's because it's very lonely and scary and hard to go through it. And I know I'm not the only one. And I that is Mary Kane. She was once considered the fastest girl in America and says a Nike coach ruined her career and her body. Kane shared her story with the New York Times and NBC Nightly News. At the center of the criticism is the Nike Oregon Project coach Alberto Salazar. But new tonight, Nike is responding to the criticism, saying Kane tried to get back into the program earlier this year. Lindsay Nadrich spoke with the New York Times reporter to learn more about Kane's story. Mary Kane set many national records. At 16, she got a call from Alberto Salazar at Nike, who told her she was the most talented athlete he'd ever seen. Her freshman year of college, she signed on with Nike's Oregon Project. Mary sat down for an interview with the New York Times to share her story. I joined Nike because I wanted to be the best female athlete ever. Instead, I was emotionally and physically abused by a system designed by Alberto and endorsed by Nike. New York Times reporter Lindsay Krause, a runner herself, interviewed Mary. I think to me, I was like, your story is actually so powerful, but it's not powerful because of the illegal stuff. It's powerful because of what's legal. Mary says the all-male coaching staff run by Salazar convinced her that in order to get better, I had to become thinner and thinner and thinner. But the outcome is that she was driven to extreme eating, and this is such a ubiquitous thing that happens all the time. And I think it's, again, why we don't, we don't just want to tell these stories and be like, oh, that was a sad story. We want to tell these stories and think about why things are the way they are. Again, this is all legal. This is all fine. This is really common practice in many cases. When young women athletes don't eat enough to keep up with their activity level, it can lead to a serious condition called REDS syndrome. Women stop having their periods and lose bone density. Mary says she didn't have a period for three years and broke five different bones. I knew I was spiraling. I knew the signs were coming on that I was starting to become depressed and develop disordered eating. And so I went to people for help, but I was always told to either suck it up or that this is just the way to get better. It got to a point where Mary says she was having suicidal thoughts and started cutting herself. She says she told Salazar about it, but no one helped her. Eventually, she quit the team. She says it took so long to share her story because she wasn't ready before today. I couldn't have sat in front of a camera and told my story and told it with power before today because the person right here right now knows this is not okay, know this has to change and knows that I will make sure it does because I don't want any young girl going through what I went through. I'm Lindsay Nadrich, KGW News. And now we are hearing from Nike. So Nike sent a statement in response to this story. It says, in part, these are deeply troubling allegations which have not been raised by Mary or her parents before. Mary was seeking to rejoin the Oregon Project and Alberto's team as recently as April of this year and had not raised these concerns as part of that process. We take the allegations extremely seriously and will launch an immediate investigation to hear from former Oregon Project athletes. The New York Times also says Salazar responded to them in an email and denied many of Mary's claims. He got 11,000 scientists around the world to sign onto his study on climate change. We're talking about an Oregon State University ecologist tonight. Despite the dire warnings included in this report, he says he's still optimistic we can turn things around. Bill Ripple says his goal was to create an easy to read study that would strike a chord with the public and encourage policymakers to act. The study shows how human trends over the last 40 years are accelerating climate change. He points to the fact that we're already seeing more severe weather events like flooding, droughts, heat waves and forest fires. The strongest point Ripple wants to get across is that if we act now, we can change the course. School children are striking, uh, grassroots citizens movements are demanding change, and um, 
some uh, local and national governments around the world are responding. So I think um, uh, the, the outlook is um, somewhat optimistic. The study named several key areas where we can all make changes. For one, reduce the amount of fossil fuel we use and instead choose renewable energy sources. Second, restore nature and plant a lot of carbon sequestering trees. And third, think about changing our diets. If we all reduce the amount of livestock meat we eat, we could significantly cut down on greenhouse gas emissions. If you'd like to check out the full study, we have a link to it on KGW.com.